Welcome to Worship at Wycliffe. Today at Wycliffe Presbyterian Church, we welcome the Reverend Lindsay McCall Gilliam, our new associate pastor. Pastor Gilliam comes to us with nine years of ministry experience as a graduate of Union Presbyterian Theological Seminary in Richmond, Virginia. She brings with her her entire family, her husband Dom, and two children, Lennox and Shepherd. We welcome you to ministry with us. Hear these words from Psalm 89. I will sing of your love forever, O Lord, and tell of your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your love is established forever, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Happy are the people who walk in the light of God's love. God is the glory of our strength, for our shield belongs to the Lord. reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Listen to and for God's word to you. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of the righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you have a cup of water? You heard that, right? That Jesus said, Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple will not lose their reward. This Sunday we continue our series on things that Jesus didn't say. We know that Jesus didn't say God helps them who, helps, who help themselves. We know that Jesus didn't say people get what they deserve. We know that Jesus didn't say everything happens for a reason. But before we get to what Jesus didn't say, as we look and hear and think about that gospel lesson that Pastor Gilliam just shared with us, 
we start with what Jesus does say. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Then he talks about rewards for the prophet and the righteous and, and even those who help children. Whoever welcomes me. Jesus speaks in this passage of Scripture at the end of his lecture or teaching or discussion with his disciples, sending them on to a missionary journey. The central question is, disciples, you go bearing the proclamation that the kingdom of God has come near. Will you be received or not? And so here at the end, Jesus mentions that anyone who receives Jesus or receives his disciples who carry his word, they will receive Jesus and receive their reward from God. In some ways, Jesus is saying to his disciples, imitate me. Imitate the way that I came into the towns and the villages. Imitate the way that if I was rejected, I would shake the dust from my feet and move on. But if I was accepted, blessings and rewards would come. It's a hard thing sometimes to imitate Christ. It's much harder to do than to say. And that brings us to what Jesus does not say. Jesus does not say everyone should believe and act the way that you do. Well, that's an easy one, isn't it? We know that everyone doesn't believe and act the way we do. If, we, if they did, the world would just be a much more perfect place, right? And of course, everyone should believe and act the way that you do is not something that Jesus would say. Jesus, remember, says, follow me. But the challenge, the challenge is that a lot of Christians struggle with this. A lot of Christians struggle with what it means to be to understand that people don't have to believe and act the same exact way that you do. If someone raises their hands in a worship service, we don't say, put those down. That's not the way we believe and act. If someone smokes cigarettes or cigars, if someone has a drink every now and then. We don't paint with such a broad brush as to say, I can't do that, therefore none of you can do that. That would be a terribly difficult way to live. And it would be very limiting. In a way, when we remember that Jesus doesn't say that every Christian has to believe and act the exact same way. We recognize that Jesus is talking about freedom. And isn't that fitting as we approach Independence Day? Another way to think about this is that Jesus is not advocating legalism. He's not advocating this strict adherence so close to the rule that one iota of a move left or right breaks it. Legalism talks about rule following, rule keeping, and rule enforcing. Those are all hallmarks of religion and Jesus never said, I come that you may have religion either, by the way. What's often called religion ends up being a way of keeping rules. Jesus came to point to God and to point to God's goodness. Oftentimes, religion points to us and points to our badness or unworthiness. But that's not where Jesus wants us to stay. 
Sure, there are expectations that Jesus has, but Jesus did not come to swap new rules for old rules. Rather, his appearance, his ministry on this earth, his life and death and resurrection came to put an end to clawing and grasping for self-advancement. And yet you and I all know that a lot in this world still work on that self-advancement method. Jesus proclaimed divine favor lasting peace, and genuine joy. Religion doesn't usually get there. Legalism can permeate the church, and it often does, so much so that people are turned away because they feel like they will never be good enough, they can never keep all the rules, and there's no forgiveness. Even worse, there's no grace. But God's grace through Jesus Christ is a love that is given to us like sunshine. The only way we can get out of it is to build a hut to protect ourselves. And even then the light permeates through the cracks in the walls and the windows. So a question to think about might be, can God love you more than he does already? As if following every rule and keeping everything perfect, like the Pharisees thought in days of old, is that going to make God love you more? No. Jesus never said you had to agree with everyone who is a Christian. He never said you have to impose your own sense of God's good news on everyone. Author Will Davis says it this way, The lie in the statement, everyone has to believe and act the way you do, seems to say that if God requires you to do it, then every other Christian has to do it too. If we're all not completely uniform in our Christian beliefs and practices, then someone is out of line. But that's not true. Davis goes on to say, Jesus never set up a standard by which all Christians were to be judged. Then he writes, oh wait, I'm wrong on that. He actually did give us a standard, a sort of Christian universal standard. That standard of behavior is love. Some years ago, shortly after I moved to Virginia Beach, my wife, who is a stage manager by trade, had heard of a new musical that was headed to Broadway from the Public Theater in New York City. It was called Hamilton. So she looked at me and she said, I'm going to skip church so I can get tickets to this play. I said, well, that's, that's okay. You've had you know, a busy time. You've, you know, you've been caring for our child, etc., so on and so forth. We got tickets. And I was always struck at the character King George in the musical Hamilton. At one point, He sings a song, and in the song he's talking to the rebellious American colonists. And he sings, Oceans rise, empires fall. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. That's not the kind of love that is the Christian standard. It's not the kind of love that Jesus Christ sends to us. It's not what Jesus offers. So if Jesus offers a love that accepts us, that that pushes us forward, then we do well to follow and welcome Jesus and those who come in his name. But sometimes, even for the best of us, 
our love gives way to judgment. Technology sometimes makes this very easy. A thumbs up for a like or an angry emoji for a dislike. Has your love given way for judgment? Jesus Christ is the unifier. That's the one thing anyone who calls them Christian should agree on is Jesus Christ. But we can disagree on a lot of other things. The color of the carpet whether we have stained glass windows, what style of music is played in the church. How can we grow comfortable with Christians who are faithful but yet who feel differently about theology or worship or even issues in the news, social issues, moral issues? When we welcome Jesus Christ and welcome the one who sent Jesus Christ, we recognize that we do well to give permission to be different to those around us. We do well to remember that God is working on others and on each of us all at the same time. The Holy Spirit is constantly active. So before we say that someone has fallen away or before we berate them for doing wrong, we have to recognize they're a work in progress just like we are. So we give permission to be different to others. We remember that God is working on them and we practice confession before God being honest before God about where we have fallen short. But perhaps most importantly is we need to know what Jesus said, i.e., what is the good news according to Jesus Christ. And we need to know the difference between the good news according to Jesus Christ and the good news according to ourselves. In other words, the difference between His gospel and our gospel. Of course, finally, one of the most important things, when we're with someone that has a different opinion than we do, sometimes it's best to listen and pray. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus said. We are to practice deep hospitality, offering the gift of freedom that we so richly cherish in this nation to others. The one who sent Jesus Christ, God our Father, maker of heaven and earth, God practices hospitality. God respects freedom, and God endorses love. Love which you know the Apostle Paul wrote about, saying it does not insist on its own way. Jesus never said everyone has to believe and act the same way that you do. As Christians, How could we expect anyone to welcome us if we aren't able to extend grace and hospitality to those with whom we do not perfectly agree? Amen. <laughs>
We give you thanks for this day. As we approach our nation's celebration of Independence Day, we give you thanks for all of your good gifts. We give you thanks for Purple Mountain Majesties, the spacious skies above us, and the soil beneath our feet. We thank you for all that we have and for the many who have given their lives to make this country what it is. Even as we are Americans, O oh God, we follow you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Help our following of Christ lead us to be welcoming to those who are different from us. Help us to find common ground and follow the example of your Son, Jesus Christ. As he said, whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. We pray for our nation and all the nations of the earth. On this day, as we remember the hard-fought independence of our country, we pray for peace all around the world. We ask that you work powerfully in the lives of all those who are in the midst of conflict and challenge. Work powerfully in the lives of those who struggle, who can't break out of a legalistic understanding of faith and life. Let the sunshine of your love rest on their shoulders and lift them as they realize they are not alone, but you who have promised to never leave nor forsake them, offer them a peace that passes all understanding. We pray for this city we live in, for the Commonwealth, and for all of our leaders elected and appointed. Work through each leader and help us to make a difference wherever we are in your name. We remember this day those who grieve and who are saddened and we ask your comfort for them. You offer us living water. Give us courage to reach out and take the cup. And now, O oh gracious God, giver of every good gift, we say again the prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, Remember, as Christians, how could we ever expect to be welcomed if we cannot also display the signs of welcome and grace as Jesus has taught us? Go now from this place. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.